the Antonov AN-225 Maria is the most massive airplane in the world. It has a maximum takeoff weight of 1.4 million pounds and it can reach speeds of up to 530 miles per hour in the air. But the Maria is far from the only plane of this size in service. The Lockheed C-5 Galaxy and Boeing Dreamlifter both possess maximum takeoff weights nearing 1 million pounds each. So how do these gigantic planes fly? Planes of this size, like any other aircraft, must carefully balance four physical forces – lift, thrust, drag, and weight – to achieve and maintain flight. Once in the air, they transport people, tanks, smaller planes, and even spacecraft across the planet. Let's take a brief look at how these four physical forces affect a plane's ability to fly. The first thing we need to understand is that for a plane to maintain flight, the sum of its thrust and lift must exceed its weight and drag. Thrust refers to the forward force of a plane, usually generated by its engines. Lift is the upward force generated by the difference in air pressure and speed above and below a plane's wings. This is why most planes need to build up speed along a runway to create fast-moving air across the wings before takeoff. Drag, on the other hand, refers to the resistance a plane meets while in flight. It's most commonly caused by air particles. This is why the fastest commercial and military-grade planes operate at such high altitudes. The air is thinner there, which means less drag. Now when it comes to weight, the last main force in play during a plane's flight, it took a significant technological breakthrough with the introduction of turbojet engines to allow plane designs to transform from this to this. The modern turbojet engine as we know it was invented by Frank Whittle. His first patent for the design in 1930 already featured compressors, one of the key components that allow a turbojet engine to generate such a substantial amount of thrust. It wasn't until 1941 that the first turbojet engine-powered plane took flight. A turbojet engine has three main components, a compressor, an engine, and a turbine. Air is drawn into the engine through the inlet, then compressed and heated by the compressor. In the combustion chamber, fuel is ignited, heating and expanding the air. Some of the energy generated by the hot gas is extracted by the turbine and used to drive the compressor, while the rest is released through the exhaust nozzle. The result? Thrust, and lots of it. And for large aircraft, this was absolutely essential. Larger planes would often utilize four or more of these turbojet engines to generate thrust. While engineers initially saw this breakthrough as a way to design and build exponentially faster planes than ever before, they quickly realized that these engines also made larger, heavier planes possible. But first, additional design considerations had to be made. One such consideration was the plane's wings. As designers sought to create planes that could reach transonic or even supersonic speeds, they looked at reimagining wings in order to minimize drag and maximize lift. In 1935, German engineer Dr. Adolf Bussmann proposed the idea of the swept wing at the Volta conference. He suggested that by having a plane's wings sweep at an angle, instead of being fixed to the fuselage at a right angle, the amount of drag experienced by a plane would decrease significantly. Even though he was initially laughed at, his idea would later revolutionize aircraft design. This began with a revision to the Boeing B-47 Stratojet, one of the first planes designed to fly fast and high. It featured the first ever swept wing design. The AN-225 also famously had the same design, but it didn't end there. It also had larger wings and a wingspan of 290 feet to aid in generating lift. Large aircraft like the AN-225 also featured vast amounts of cargo space, both in volume and in weight. Aside from being spacious, the interiors of these aircraft also featured pressurized cabins. This allowed everyone on board to freely roam and work without requiring an oxygen mask. 
While these aircraft were initially designed to transport military cargo, seeing so many people on board the massive planes gave the private sector an idea that would change the world. Let's make this class of aircraft accessible to all. With its Boeing 707 already in use as the first successful commercial jetliner, Boeing was commissioned by Pan Am to design and construct an even larger jetliner. It would be two and a half times bigger than the 707, and the additional seats would bring the average cost of a plane ticket down by 30%, placing long-haul travel within the reach of more people. Boeing succeeded. By 1970, it introduced the iconic Boeing 747, and the rest is aeronautical history.